This past weekend, I drove 11 hours to Buena Vista, Colorado for a music festival, but mostly it was an excuse to get out of the Vegas heat and see some fall colors. And it was better than I could have expected and certainly put me in the spooky spirit. Hey y'all, I'm Geology Joes, and if this is your first time stumbling across my channel, welcome to Geology That Kills, where I explore the many ways Earth is inadvertently trying to kill us. Today, we are talking water. Now you might be thinking, Geology Joes, what are you saying? How is water related to geology? Oh my sweet dear viewers, that is a great question. Hydrology is a branch of geology that focuses on the movement of water above and below the surface. So as far as geology that kills, it counts. Now back to Buena Vista. Of course I explored outside of the music festival. You can't keep a geologist from the potential of enthralling rock encounters. But it wasn't the rocks I found interesting this time. It was the water and its deadly history. But probably not in the way you are expecting. Water rights. What are they? Free water for all? Not quite. Actually, the opposite. Back in the mid-1800s, the gold rush brought hopeful prospectors to the western United States. Using water from nearby rivers and streams for residential and small-scale mining was not a problem at first. But then more and more folks, including farmers, relocated out west, building dams in the rivers, reducing flow, and sometimes preventing flow altogether downstream. Early claims to water were similar to mine claims, where anyone could post a notice claiming the water along a section of stream and then putting the water to use. Basically, the way it works is the first to claim and use the water has a right to it, even if they don't own the land the water is on, which most of the land at the time was owned by the federal government. Everyone else, after the first claim, has less seniority, less access, and depending on the location, claim date, and other factors, less water. Water rights are dictated by the states instead of the federal government, so the establishment of a water law framework differed between the territories and states. It was between the late 1800s and early 1900s that state and county governments began drafting government-recognized and regulated water rights, which came only after years of violent disputes and bloodshed. The water wars of this time period depicts the rage and possessiveness over this most precious of resources. Along the Arkansas River in Buena Vista in the 1870s, a misunderstanding over water led to multiple deaths. In 1874, George Harrington accused his neighbor Elijah Gibbs of stealing his water. Gibbs was arrested but was released the next day and consequently Harrington was shot in the back that evening. Suspecting Gibbs, an angry mob tried to hang him but was prevented by arresting officers. A trial was held for Gibbs with 60 witnesses, but he was acquitted and returned to Buena Vista. Angry with the verdict, a local vigilante group tried to burn Gibbs' house down with his family inside. The resulting gun battle that followed left three dead and many wounded. For months afterward, additional murders occurred due to this incident, even after Gibbs fled the city. This is just one out of many stories and many battles over water that led to bloodshed across the arid west. Who knew that water was such a hot topic, even in the 19th century? The crazy thing about water rights is that nearly all available water in the western United States is considered owned through prior appropriation, meaning there are few drops unclaimed for new users. If new users want water, they need to buy the water from someone who has water rights. For example, a growing city in the West will need to purchase water rights from farmers who hold senior rights to a nearby river. Cities do not get a designated amount of water just because they are a city with hundreds of thousands of people. The farmer with senior rights, meaning he was there first, outranks them in priority. And the thing about senior rights is that if the water owner is not getting his allotted amount of water, possibly due to a dry season, he can bring his grievances to the state, and the state can reduce the amount of water given to the water rights holders with less seniority in reverse order of priority. As water becomes more scarce and cities in the West continue to grow, obtaining new sources of water will become a real challenge. 
If measures to improve sustainability of water resources are not implemented in the near future, the West will become inhospitable. Current projections estimate that in the next 50 years, many regions will face severe water shortages. Already, Lake Mead, a water resource for 25 million people, is concerningly close to reaching Deadpool. No, not the anti-hero. Deadpool is when the lake level is so low that no water can pass through the Hoover Dam and down to Arizona, California, and Mexico. That's approximately 96% of the water allocation of the lower basin not getting to where it needs to go. And that could be the real killer of life as the southwestern U.S. has come to know. It's hard to imagine the implications not only for the West but also the eastern U.S. when droves of desert dwellers inevitably migrate. Well, that's all I have today for Geology That Kills. If you enjoyed this episode and want more like it, leave a comment down below and subscribe to my channel. I'll catch you next time.